Well, it was supposed to happen today. You were supposed to line up at the airport and present your real ID card. This was the deadline. Now, it wasn't the only deadline, of course. Originally, when the Real ID Act was signed by George W. Bush on uh, May the 11th of 2005, the deadline was May the 11th of 2008. There was a three-year window to implement all this. Well, uh, there was a lot of opposition. Number one, the law was passed illegally, really. What happened was we didn't want a national ID, and everybody knew we didn't want a national ID. The senators were unwilling to vote in a national ID. However, some very slick, tricky politicians slipped the Real ID Act on the back of an appropriations bill providing funding for our troops in Iraq and also funding for tsunami release, relief. It was pretty much a must-pass bill, and consequently, uh, they slid it in there. Uh, and they it was voted 100 to 0 when it couldn't even uh, pass on its own. Consequently, that's the way we got the Real ID Act. President George W. Bush was all behind it because he wanted to monitor every single email, every single web visit, every single phone call, and all that happened under his administration after 911. Uh, and uh, he later on passed bills retroactively. How do you do that? How do you pass bills retroactively? Well, we did it. I guess you do anything you want to do when you're in power. But anyway, we passed bills retroactively, uh, absolving AT&T, Verizon, uh, and all the rest for the fact that they gave out our information without warrants illegally, illegally, illegally. The government, the people in government that did that should be arrested and the people in these ISPs should be arrested because they also did it illegally. But uh, that was a different atmosphere back in those days. At that time, we were just about ready for anything just as long. You'd scared us so bad that we will just do anything. Just keep us safe. Uh, Privacy, uh, freedom was pretty much going right down the tubes. Uh, at that particular time. Well, we're a little further removed. Uh, 2008 came around, and the states begin to dig in their heels. They begin to pass laws against the Real ID Act. Uh, End Time Ministries published a special edition of End Time Magazine with George Bush's picture on the front, signing the Real ID Act, 666, the Mark of the Beast. Uh, And I think we labeled it Real ID, Mark of the Beast, question mark. And so there was a lot of opposition that was generated. We sent a copy of that magazine to every U.S. senator, every U.S. congressman, every state governor, every state senator, every state congressman, the president, the vice president, anyone else that we thought could have an influence on this. We sent it to them. Now, the result was that 25 or 26 states out of the 50 passed uh, laws or resolutions against the Real ID Act. I think 15 of them actually passed laws against implementing the Real ID Act. It became against the law in the state. And, of course, the U.S. government was attempting to seize state powers. They were overcoming the Tenth Amendment, and that was an insult to the different state powers. So, consequently, there was a lot of resistance to the Real ID Act. Uh, May 11, 2008, the deadline came around. Almost no one, I don't think anyone, was compliant. And then they postponed it till. Uh, December of 2009, still no progress. Then they changed it to May 2011, still resistance. Then they changed it to uh, January the 15th of 2013, today. And still, the latest news is, well, first of all, we heard nothing over the last few months. I mean, it was like silence as the graveyard. And so finally, there was a little article came out just a few weeks ago stating that the date again had been postponed till 2015, that there were now 13 states that were in compliance. And of course, what that screamed was there were 37 states that were not in compliance. Now I'm talking about uh, eight years after the passage of the bill, the states are still standing firm. 37 out of 50 states are saying, no, thank you. We don't want a national ID. We like freedom. And so consequently, the deadline of today came and went. Congratulations, America. Congratulations, freedom, and sorry about your luck, big brother government. Again, you have been defeated. However, sorry to say, the law is not yet off the books. They now have postponed it till 2015. 
Yes, they will continue to, to, to try. Okay, now, what I want to do today is to talk about why this is so important. I want to start off by reading in the Bible the prophecy that in our times, there will be a system set up around the world where everybody will have to have a mark or a number in order to have permission to buy or sell. Now, the Real ID Act, uh, the national ID, in most nations, when they have a national ID, and most of them do, you have to have a national ID card in order to uh, hold a job. Without a job, you cannot obviously buy or sell, no money, and you won't be doing any buying or selling. Well, here's what the prophecy says. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 18. Oh, by the way, this chapter 13 is very interesting. The entire chapter is devoted to the structure of the one world government of the end time. The first eight verses talk about the political system. There will be a government and there will be a one world leader called the Antichrist or the beast. Uh, Chapter number 11 through 14, it talks about a one world religious system and a religious leader. Uh, In other places in the scripture, this religious leader is called the false prophet. And then in chapter 16 through 18, it talks about the uh, economic system of this one world governmental system, one world religious system. And the economic system is going to be used to force compliance to the one world religion and to the one world governmental system. Now that's where I want to read it's starting with verse 15, actually of revelation 13. Here's what it says. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, remember, we're talking about the beast, the one world government, and the ruler of that one world government, the Antichrist. And he, now this is speaking about the false prophet, the religious partner, he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Can you imagine living in a world where it was against the law? for you to buy or sell. You had been frozen out economically, just like right now Iran is frozen out economically as an, on a national basis. Uh, she has to find friends who will sell her on the black market. She has to find people who are unwilling to conform uh, to this United Nations edict in order to survive. Uh, her oil sales has dropped about in half, and so her income has dropped about in half over the last two or three years. So it's very tough for Iran right now. Now, this prophecy states, though, that this kind of an economic sanction will be placed against any individual that is unwilling to pledge allegiance to this one world government and the leader of the one world government, the Antichrist. Uh, Let me read it again, verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. Now I seriously doubt you're going to have 666 on your forehead or in your hand. The Bible says you will have the number of the name of the beast, and let him that hath understanding count or calculate one pass, one translation says, calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And another place in Scripture it talks about it's the number of his name. So it apparently will be the name of the beast in some way, but somehow that name will equate to, by some kind of a formula, it will equate to 666. Now the Bible says if you take this mark, you will be eternally damned. Now, why am I talking about that? Because the mark, the Real ID Act, the national ID that was supposed to be implemented in America today, would have set up the mechanism for implementing this scripture. Are you hearing me? Now, this is really important for us to realize. That's the reason we have fought so vigorously about the Real ID Act here in America. Now, most nations are set up for it right now, and most nations are going to fall under the reign of the Antichrist. However, the Bible teaches there will be a few nations that resist, and will be dissenting nations. We want America to be one of those dissenting nations. So that's the reason we're talking about 
the Mark, the Real ID Act. Now, they called it the Real ID because they didn't want to call it a national ID because Americans don't want a national ID. So they said, when's a national ID, not a national ID? Oh, when we call it a real ID. I mean, how stupid do they think we are? I mean, I, I sat and heard Richard Barth, who was the assistant to Mr. Chertoff, the Secretary General at the time of Homeland Security, and he, with a straight face, talked to a group of people, about 250 of us, and said, real ID is not a national ID. And I looked at that, I listened to him, and I thought, Mr. Barth, do you think we're ignorant? Do you think we have no intelligence whatsoever? And, of course, the acid test is simply this. Is it an ID? Well, even Mr. Barth would have said, well, yes, it's an ID. Well, then was it passed by a city law, county law, state law, or national law? Well, it was passed by a national law. So it's an ID passed by a national law. Mr. Barth, it's a national ID. Now, most, even the government has now accepted it, that it is a national ID. So here we are moving toward uh, 2015. They say they will implement it then. Now, my point is we have won the battle. We have not yet won the war. We need to see the day when real ID is repealed once and for all so that Americans will never be brought under the power of this national ID system. Okay, now, why should we never have a national ID? Because national ID, numbering the people, is always government's first step in being able to control us, to track us, to control us. They want to number everyone, put us on a database, and then they require our national ID card for opening a bank account, for driving, for getting on an airplane, for entering a federal building. And before long, you're leaving a nice little computer trail behind you so they can track you 24-7. And believe me, if this card came into being, you would soon be using it to get in almost everywhere you want to go, to rent a motel, hotel, uh, to cash a check. Almost everything that you needed to do, you would now have to show your national ID card once it were implemented and that was supposed to have happened today. Thank God it did not happen today. I'll tell you more when we come back. You're listening to Politics and Religion. 